June was a pretty busy month for the VR space. We have more highly desired features brought by the Quest V67 update and news about Pico which seems to be re-entering the game. The eye tracking technology might become more accessible than ever and Apple is still struggling with its cheaper headset. We will cover all of this and more in this episode of VR News. Let's start with the benefits brought by the V66 update that started rolling out at the beginning of the month. Most likely you already hear about it, so I will be fast. The most significant is the reduction in the pass-through distortion and warping on the Quest 3. Additionally, we can now have background music from the browser or another 2D app while being in an immersive app like a VR game. And if you enjoy using hand tracking, now you can try the experimental feature of raised mounted menu buttons. Lastly, with this update, we can finally hide the apps that we no longer use from our library. I believe these are some good quality of life improvements. But with not much time to get used to these new features, we already started to hear about V67. And this one was a huge step towards special computing on the Quest headsets. Until now, the Quest system interface supported up to three visible windows at once and had two separate modes you could switch between the close view and far view. V67 PTC adds a new experimental option called New Window Layout, which gets rid of these modes. Instead, it lets you grab and detach windows to position and resize them in the way you want. You can detach up to 3 windows, which will allow you to have a total of 6 2D windows running at once, 3 docked and 3 detached. New Window Layout also adds the new ability to take any window full screen which makes it much larger and temporarily hides the dock and other windows. In the dock's place is a simplified control bar that lets you toggle curving, change between the pass-through and a virtual environment, and adjust the brightness of the said environment. I think we can say that this new layout is a little inspired by the Vision OS made by Apple. Or, at the very least, Meta was forced to prioritize this type of innovation in its UI because of the constant comparison between the two VR devices. If you are not interested in Meta, we also have some news about ByteDance's new Pico 4S, which will have the same chipset as Meta Quest 3, but paired with more RAM. Well, Quest 3 has 8GB of RAM, the new Pico supposedly will have 12. This will make it superior to Quest 3 for on-device multitasking and potentially allow developers to use higher resolution textures and more details. For now, the only additional information we have about the headset is that it will have a 6 GHz Wi-Fi antenna and come with ringless controllers. The device has been certified by the South Korean's National Radio Research Agency so we at least have the confirmation of its existence. But it remains to be seen when we will get some additional information. Now, let's say you always wanted eye tracking on your VR headset, but the ones who have it right now are too expensive. Well, this new device might be the solution you were waiting for. Inside is a company that plans to release a $160 eye tracking add-on for the Quest 2 and 3. The approach is a little different from what we are used to. It also has infrared illuminators, but instead of cameras which are supposed to see your eyes, they will use an array of 6 simple and inexpensive photo sensors that measure the intensity of the reflection of this infrared light of your eyes. Apparently, each part of your eye reflects infrared light with a slightly different intensity. Inside's neural network uses these intensities reported by the photosensors to determine the exact position of your pupils. Inside claims its approach uses 5 times less battery than camera-based eye tracking, can easily run at 1000Hz and has less than a single millisecond of latency. In comparison, camera-based eye tracking typically runs at 120Hz and has tens of milliseconds of processing time. However, not everything is sunshine and rainbows. This approach is slightly less accurate than camera-based eye tracking. Inside claims an accuracy of around 2 degrees compared with a less than 1 degree for the current camera-based eye tracking. 
For now, there is no specific timeline for the release. But if this proves to be a reliable method of achieving eye tracking, the photo sensor approach could become the future standard in all headsets, even the lower cost ones. As for the gaming news of this month, we have something special. If you always wanted to play PC VR titles like Half-Life Alex, but don't have a VR ready PC, you might soon be able to enjoy these games directly on your quest. The solution Meta is trying to create, codenamed Avalanche, is a VR cloud streaming program that we heard about for the first time in May 2022. Since then, the project has been dead silent, until recently when GamerGen accidentally found an experimental setting named Activate Avalanche while streaming. After clicking on it, the option of playing Lone Echo, a PC VR title, appears right there on his quest. He didn't manage to actually play the game, since the program is not really available at the moment. But it should mean that Meta didn't give up on this project and it will hopefully be released for the general users in the future. I am both excited and skeptical about how well this cloud gaming service will actually work. Taking into account that it didn't really become popular in the flat screen gaming scene because of its various problems. Lastly, let's talk about Apple, which reportedly suspended its work on a high-end Vision Pro successor to focus on the release of a cheaper Vision headset by the end of 2025. This information comes from Wayne Ma and Kianer Liu. The former has reliably reported in the past many details of Vision Pro before they were officially revealed or even acknowledged to exist by Apple. Supposedly, this regular vision headset will still use high resolution micro OLED displays and weight at least one third less than the Vision Pro. Its estimated price is at the moment in between $1,500 and $2,500. From the recent news, Apple seems to want LG and Samsung to supply the micro OLED displays for the cheaper headset. If you remember, in the past there were rumors about Apple testing new micro OLED displays from two Chinese suppliers. I think it's safe to say they didn't manage to meet Apple standards, seeing the later looking for displays in other places. The expected resolution of the new Vision headset displays is somewhere around 2600 by 2300 pixels or 2500 by 2500 pixels if they were square. For now, we can only wait for more official informations to be released. This is all for last month's news. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing for more VR content. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye.